the guilty. Let us continue. February 26, 1206. Sorry, Edgeworth. I didn't mean to get you in trouble. Huh, don't worry about it. This is my problem, not yours. Hope not interrupting anything, pals. Second time, baby. Oh, guess I am. I'll come back later. So sad. Wait, that's to come true. What is it? You got a lot of nerve, pal. Making a detective run all around while on duty. And to top it off, you call me here. I've seen happier people at funerals. I've, you've said this before. It's a catchphrase. I take it Lana's having you run errands again? Let me tell you, this is the last time, pal. Here, to ask me to give you this to you if there was a break in today's trial. Evidence law? Actually, was talking about this just the other day. You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule number one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. Is that right, Mr. Wright? Seems so. You at least study some evidence law, really. Ooh. Ooh. The chief prosecutor also wanted me to give you a message. A message? She said, if you're planning to take him on, you're gonna need this book. This children's book. Hmm, him. Guess I'll need to give this book a thorough read. Doesn't look like that book would do you any good now, though. All well, that's left now is the chief prosecutor's sentence. That's where you're wrong, kiddo. I mean, detective. Huh? Haven't you figured it out yet? While well, I'm still sitting in that prosecutor seat, despite all these allegations being thrown at me, with Mr. Edgeworth, the real trial today hasn't begun yet. Oh, we do some, oh. some team up action. What? What else is there left to do? Your credibility's been all about ruined with this forged evidence you were unaware of. Emma Sky found out she unwittingly caused a man's death. And now you're telling me you want to do more? You gotta be kidding me, pal. You're missing the point, detective. Lana didn't murder Detective Goodman. She merely stuck a knife into his dead body. That means the real killer is still out there. What? And we're going to expose them. No matter what it takes. Case has hurt too many people. It's time to bring it to an end. Back to the case. Final showdown. Put an end to this madness. Court will now reconvene for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. The inquiry committee is is planning to h impose harsh penalties for your actions. Thank you for the news, Your Honor. Yes, well, ahem. Normally, this is where the prosecution calls for for witness. But, er, uh, ahem. <coughs> this isn't easy to say. You see, there is some concern that you, Mr. Edgeworth, may have, uh, struck a bargain. You think I may have manipulated the witnesses? I didn't say that. <laughs> Out loud. It's just, you see, everyone's been talking, Dan. Very well, Your Honor. I have a solution. A solution? That being the case? The prosecution will allow the defense folk to call for all further witnesses. What? But there's no precedent for what you're proposing. Undeniably, this is an unusual arrangement, but a very effective one. It will prove that I haven't struck any deals with the witnesses. Hmm, well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it should have found a way to continue the trial. 
Very well. The defense accepts the prosecution's proposal. Then settled. The uh, defense may now call forth the next witness. Mr. Wright? You do realize this is your last chance. If you call the wrong witness, this trial is as good as over. The defense calls. The time's finally come to bring out the real murderer. Dan? Gant. I want yeah, to. Uh, okay, yeah, we're still talking about current murder of Goodman. Yes. Okay. Or we could call Meekins to get wrong, you know. <laughs> I get did up it. Here. Get up here, Gant. Hey. Demon Gant. The defense calls Demon Gant to the stand. We've been making fun of Meekins for too long. It's time to do the actual criminal. Time to stop punching down. Start. Time to start punching up. Damon Gant, what does he have to do with anything? Yeah. As the defendant's partner two years ago, Mr. Gant has first-hand knowledge of the crime. I feel we should hear what he has to say about it. Hmm. As luck would have it, he should still be in the courthouse. He would also be the least likely to have been manipulated by me in any way. Wouldn't you agree, Your Honor? True. All right, bailiff, please escort Mr. Gant to the stand. Well, well. Witness, please state your name and occupation. What is this? Some kind of practical joke? Or I was just on my way to lunch. Your name and occupation, sir. Worthy, are you sure you want to do this? Your name and occupation! Every Jesus Christ! Time. <laughs> <laughs> so, you want to play hardball, eh? But please, Mr. Gant. Fine. My name is Team Damon Gant. I'm the acting chief of police. The acting? Now then, Chief Gant, the court requests to hear your testimony. Oh, right, oh, what's with the grim face? First, let's clear up this SL9 incident. Oh, you mean that time when Lana's sister murdered that prosecutor? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Personally, I think it's been made pretty clear already. There are still some things unaccounted for. Oh, like what? Like the role you played in all this. Son, either you're very brave or very foolish. It's a very thin line. You are aware, of course, that a police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. That's right. Weapons? Sure, take my testimony, for example. I don't have to give it if I don't want to. What? Is that true? I'm afraid so. The chief of police has the right to refuse to testify. Of course, such an action carries with it certain risk. Don't worry, I'm not here to hinder your trial. Just remember, if this turns out to be a big waste of time, don't say it and warn you. Very well, the witness may now begin his testimony. As I recall, Neil and I were questioning him that day. To make a long story short, we slipped up. That power outage didn't help either. When I went to my office, I found Lana there. Apparently she already arranged the crime scene. As you can see, I had nothing to do with that forgery. But it was in your safe. But it was in your safe. Hmm, is that when Dark was arrested? Him? He was lying on the floor, unconscious. When Emma sent Neo flying, he seemed dark bumped his head. 
And see, everything seems pretty clear cut. If the police chief has the right to refuse to testify, then I better hit him hard fast. Neo and I was questioning that day. To make a long story short, we slipped up. Power hours didn't help either. So we just go straight to the uh, the safe theory. Uh, well, I got, I guess you gotta press for it because we don't have evidence of the safe mm -hmm. or even the piece, other than the cloth or the leather piece. I guess what I meant was, do we press? Do we press them on everything and risk uh, pressing it unnecessarily, or should we just go straight for the the topic at hand? I guess press everything that you can. Okay, then we'll start from here. As I recall, a ceremony was held at the police department that day. Yeah, that's right. I guess you could say I'm a workaholic. With the winning this award, Neil was all fired up too. That's probably what spooked Dark. It made him run away like that. There was a defendant, Lana Sky, also present in the room. I don't quite remember. At the very least, she wasn't there when Dark ran for it. To make a long story short, we slipped up. The power hours didn't help either. So the two of you ran immediately after him, right? That's right, but Dark made it to the elevator first. So Neo and I split up. He went upstairs and I went downstairs. I guess you can say, he got lucky. What's this about a power outage? Oh, that? The elevator stopped all of a sudden and I got the shock of my life. Well, probably not as shocked as Neo was when that knife went into his heart though. <laughs> oh. Ooh. That's not funny. I went to my office, I found Lana there. Okay. Could you tell us what you saw? It was a shocking sight. Neil and that serial killer were lying in a heap on the floor, all tangled together. Dark was also lying collapsed on the floor. Yes, apparently he hit his head and was knocked out. Next to them were those two poor girls, Lana and Emma. Lana was cradling Emma in her arms. Looking back at it now, she must have already known what her sister had done. Apparently she had already arranged the crime scene. How can you know that? because of the victim's body. It had already been moved. So that means... We found the body near Lana's desk? That's right. I think you said earlier. It was my suit of armor that really stabbed the prosecutor. Yes. Anyways. As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. We have a safe though, don't we? Oh yeah, yeah, we have, we have stuff. We have this. Oh, what does this book say? No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. Unregistered evidence present must be relevant to the case on trial. Okay. <laughs> Got it. That doesn't help right now. I'm pretty sure it's the piece of cloth, right? Found in a safe? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's press them on this and then we'll do the, the evidence presentation. So you're saying that the forgery had already taken place by the time you arrived at your office? That's exactly what I'm saying. If I can understand how Lana must have felt. But moving a body and hiding evidence are inexcusable no matter what the circumstances. 
to how it really went down? Staring at the witness won't do you any good, Mr. Wright. If you're going to stare at anything, you better off staring at the court record. Worthy, worthy, always the smooth talker. But which piece of evidence ties Gan to the forgery? Lana did admit to forging evidence, but that can't be the whole truth. Somehow I gotta link Gan to the incident. Alright. Right here, baby. The forgery. The piece of cloth, right? Uh, has Emma's prints on it. And it was in a safe, which means yeah. he did have something to do with the forgery. Yeah, because I guess he hid evidence. Yep. Yeah. If we had none to do with the forgery, then how do you explain this? Uh, what's that? Then what's that on there? A handprint? Chief Gant, your explanation, please. I don't know. You tell me, son. Huh? My dear Rido, don't you know the second rule of evidence law? Uh oh, not this again. Evidence law. Oh, no. Rule number two unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. Tell me, how is that rag relevant to this trial? It appears the defense was not prepared. I guess it's too early to use this piece of evidence. Please accept my profound apologies, Chief. Would you mind giving the defense another chance? Well, okay, I'll do just this once, but only because you asked, Uggy. Thank you, I assure you the defense is terribly sorry, ha ha ha. Yeah, sorry I didn't nail you. I recall, you and I were questioned that day. Oh, damn, now we have to play by the rules, huh? Yeah. He had nothing to do with that forgery, so we have to legally get him. Mm, okay. The children's book? But, but how does that, how does that help? And that's legal, about law. Yeah, but how does that help <laughs> connect him to the forgery? Okay, so we can't use the cloth, we can't use the jar, because they're not related to the... The this case? Yeah. Nothing to do with the forgery. So how did he... How could he have played a role in uh, faking the crime scene? No, well, the evidence letters, he, has, he had half of it, right? Yes, because he did have the half he was reading already. Yeah, so let's present that. Do it. You claim you had nothing to do with the forgery? But I'm afraid that claim you cannot back up. Explain yourself. Several pieces of evidence were found in your office. Take this list, for example. That's the list Emma Sky drew her picture on. This was discovered in your desk. Not only that, but a piece of this jar that was sitting by your office was found inside your safe. It was found where? You see, Chief Gant, these articles of evidence uncovered in your office are both concrete proof that you also played a part in the illegal investigation. Chief Gant, what's the meaning of this? Oh, here's a defense attorney who may even rival Worthy. So you admit to it then, that you were involved in the forgery. Who, me? Or do you mean you? Me? Why would I really do this? Well, you were the one who snuck into my office when you found this evidence. Prosecutors aren't the only ones capable of forging evidence, you know. Defense attorneys can do so too. Isn't that right, Rido? Huh? 
However, Detective Gumshoe was present during the investigation. Worthy, my boy. Not even detectives are exempt from the law. Rest assured, Dick will receive his due punishment. What? What? And she doesn't go to drops any further, he'll end up paying to work. Yes, well, in light of the detective's presence, please give us your testimony regarding these pieces of evidence found in your office and their relation to the forgery that took place at the crime scene. My, my. Kids these days no longer know how to put two and two together. Let's see, what was it now? A jar fragment and a list? For all I know, you could have planted them in my office. Anyways, you can't prove when those pieces of evidence were discovered. If they were found after Dark was convicted, then they're worthless. There's no reason I participate in a forgery. Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out anyway. Hmm. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. When investigating the crime scene, you should have been more careful to observe protocol. You do understand I'm the chief police, right? There will be consequences. Nah. Ooh. Indeed, I believe I will press charges, so you won't make the same mistake again. My apologies, but could you mind waiting until tomorrow for that? Today is, well, you know. Alright, Dougie. In return, though. I know, I know. That place, right? Huh? What are these guys? Telepathic? Okay. For all I know, you could have planted them in my office. Okay. Anyways, you can't prove when these pieces of evidence were discovered. Okay. If they were found after Dark was convicted, then they're worthless. There's no reason I participate in a forgery. Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. Hmm. Hmm. I'm thinking it's this one. Well, okay. That list he gave us, right? The evidence list? Doesn't... Yeah. Doesn't Edgeworth have the other half of it? Which you means have both halves now. Now, but at the time, we only had one half, right? Which means yeah. we can prove that the other half of the evidence list existed back then. Because Edgeworth had it back then. Get it? Which means... You get Lincoln what I'm saying? Not fully. Try it. Well, let's press this first. Are you saying this jar fragment wasn't discovered in the initial investigation? It would appear not. After all, it wasn't listed in the evidence list. For all we know, it could have suddenly materialized the day after Dark was sentenced. Yeah, he's trying to say the evidence does exist. Oh, and wouldn't that be convenient? Right. The Chief isn't talking about possibilities, as long as you can't rule that out. Your remarks, however clever they may be, will always succeed in wasting time. Tell me something I don't know. Come now, Rido. Think about it. There's no reason I participate in a forgery. The range crime scene would have me out anyway. Yeah, if they were found after Dr. Convicts, it's not worthless. I'm gonna do the list. Give it a try. Oh. Damn. Oh. Oh. Always thinking too far ahead. If I, after Doug was convicted, then they're worthless. Uh, you can't prove when those pieces of evidence were discovered. Uh, I can press that. What do you mean by that? This is all purely hypothetical, of course. I suppose I did place those items in my safe. Such an act wouldn't necessarily constitute forgery. If concealing evidence found in the crime scene isn't forgery, I'm not through speaking yet, right -o. It all depends on when the evidence was discovered. If they were found after Dark was convicted, then they're worthless. 
And we can't prove when those pieces of evidence were discovered. Uh, is this where I do the note? Hmm. Oh, that's for SL9. But this whole case is about SL9. SL9 was the case from two years ago. Yeah, but I'm saying what we're, this conversation right now is about SL9. Oh, alright. Let's see, you can't prove when they were. I'm, I'm gonna try this here and see if that does anything. Oh, your honor. Damn. Got it wrong. Well. Can't prove what this last statement. Rearranging the crime scene won't help me out anyway. I would compress that if you want. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Could be the jar oh, on his nice. side. At the very least, there's one very large benefit you reap from all this. Oh, I wasn't aware. What is this benefit? That would, of course, be the position you have. Chief of Police. Oh, yeah. Oh. The resolution of the SL9 instance secure your promotion to Chief. That is, in, in itself, is sufficient motive. Ho, oh, ho, oh, ho, oh, ho. Oh. That's a good one. Huh? Do you really think I'm that incompetent? Well, what do you mean? Even without that case, I was already in line to become the next chief. The resolution of SL9 merely sped up the inevitable a little. Is that true, Edgeworth? Yes, he was going to be made chief anyways. Yeah, be careful when pointing that finger, or you might wind up being the one pointed at. So that means... There's only one possible motivation for you to commit forgery. If you didn't do it for yourself, then you did it for someone else. Lana? Don't be silly, Worthy. You know me better than that. Was he trying to cover up for Lana's sister? In there, a sense? Yeah. There are only three people I look out for. Me, myself, and I. There, it's on the open now. Oh, shoot, would you mind if I change my testimony a little? By all means, please do. I want to be anyone's accomplice if there was nothing in it for me. Mmm. Press time. That's a very Press. incriminating thing you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Nothing in it for you? Sorry, but the only person I care about is yours truly. That girl, Lana's little sister, was it? If you think I felt sorry for her, you better think again. I don't give a shit about this gremlin. But what about that gremlin's sister? Ugh. You're right, you don't feel sorry for anyone. Be tough on crime and tough on people, that's how I was raised. You seem to be lax enough on yourself, though. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that's a good one, Worthy. Hmm, could there have been something in it for him? Given his selfishness, would he have helped would he have helped someone out? Yeah, Lana, right? Yeah. That's what you've been saying, yeah. I mean she became chief prosecutor after that and then he'd be able to Control her. Hold this over her, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Truly might not help out anyone for their sake. But if it would benefit you, you might decide to assist someone. Mr. Wright, it appears you're positively determined to portray the chief as a nice man who likes to lend people a hand. 50 bucks. That's not what I mean. Very well then. Who is this person you believe Chief Gant may have helped forge evidence? Bob I am. Lana. Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky? The defendant? I believe it's quite obvious in light of the circumstances. 
Emma Sky fell victim to an unfortunate series of events. Who would want to help her more than her own sister, Lana? And as for Chief Gant, he would also have a reason to help Lana if she asked him to. That reason, of course, is self-profit. Self-profit? What do you mean? After the s 9 incident was resolved, Lana Scouts appointed Chief Prosecutor at the Prosecutor's Office. The person who arranged this job change was you, Chief Gant. But, but, how would he profit from all this? He would be able to use the Chief Prosecutor as his puppet. Yeah. Essentially, he would acquire unchecked authority all over investigations. You mean tell me that despite the Chief's formidable appearance, he plays with puppets? Ugh. Oh wait, you must mean puppet as in someone forced to do his bidding, never mind. Admit it, Chief. You assisted Lana Sky in forging evidence. Your motive? To appoint her as Chief Prosecutor so you can control her. Right on, my boy, you have Quite an imagination. Let me ask you something. What? Do you have any proof of this? That I controlled Lana? For example, is Lana testifying that I've done such a thing? Lana? She's keeping quiet to protect Emma. There's no way she'd testify against Gant. I'm afraid you found any proof. This all amounts to nothing more than just conjecture. Unless, that is also what happened in this incident. This incident? Or which one would that be? Of course I'm talking about. The murder of Detective Bruce Goodman. The Chief Prosecutor must have been acting strange throughout this entire tr trial. Almost as if someone had been controlling her. Worthy, you better watch your tongue. I wouldn't want you to get hurt. Just what do you mean? What he means, Your Honor, is that Chief Gant is involved in the murder of Detective Goodman. Not only that, but the Chief is now making Lana take the rap to cover up his involvement. What? 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 Order, order, order! I said order! Mr. Wright, you... you can't be serious! Huh? This... This is a front to the highest ranking officer in our law enforcement agency! To accuse the chief of police of blackmail and murder? That's it... Impossible! Your Honor, I was merely reiterating what Mr. Ashworth said in easier to understand language. It's too late, Mr. Wright. There's no turning back for us now. Looks like he's the one who's decided to go through this. Can you prove this, Mr. Wright? That the Chief, a high ranking officer of the law, is involved in this murder. Good question. Regardless of his rank or title, Chief Gant is just a man. The question is, is he a criminal? I believe the evidence would tell. Let's see. Alright then. Let's see what Mr. Wright's got, and it better be good. Show us this evidence that ties Chief Gant to the murder of Detective Goodman. ID card. Recording. Record. Yeah. Uh. 777. Seven, seven. Yeah, this one, right? Uh, yeah. ID card record, baby. Take that! This is the ID card list. Yes, the one that shows who entered the evidence room on that day of the crime. There was one ID on the list we couldn't determine the owner of yesterday. Seven times seven. 
sorry, but there's no way you can prove that's my car number. It's your number. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> He's nonchalantly just, <laughs> just. Uh, he's like, out. okay, I'm. I don't want the back and forth. It's your number. Stop lying. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? What? How do you know that? The safe in Chief Gant's office requires a code to open. A seven-digit code. Seven digits? You don't mean? I'm afraid so, Your Honor. The code was seven times seven. The same as the remaining ID card number on that list. Chief Gant, you entered the evidence room on the day of the crime! Okay. Order, order! Chief Gant, what do you have to say? Ooh, this game mad. Nothing. Nothing. The defense's search of my office is in violation of regulations. And I would demand Mr. Wright be punished to the maximum extent of the law. But right now, this court demands an explanation from you about the use of this ID card. Hmm. Chief Gant, so, so you admit it? You entered the evidence room? On the day of the crime? What about it? I'm Chief of Police. Whether it's the evidence room or the bathroom, what's the difference? I can go anywhere I want. Tell me, when you entered the room, were you alone? I always go to the bathroom alone, as I do with the evidence room. Detective Goodman wouldn't happen to be with you that day, would he? Well, of course not. Well, why would he be? I haven't seen him in days. You hadn't seen him in days? Chief can't. I'm afraid you just outdone yourself. On that day, you had to have met with Detective Goodman. Oh, what do you mean? This trial's purpose is to determine Lost Guy's guilt. No, it isn't, Your Honor. <laughs> this trial's purpose is to determine the truth. If Chief Gant met the victim on the day of the crime, then we need to determine one thing. What transpired during that meeting? In that case, Mr. Wright, I'm going to have to ask you for evidence. Show us proof that the victim went to meet Chief Gant on the day of the crime. Oh, shit. Mm, missing report? Because you, you had to submit that to the chief, right? Uh, you could be right. Can only be submitted to a chief of police, damn Oh, now you were on the road, baby! Detective Goodman lost his ID card on the day of the crime. Or to be more accurate, Jake Marshall stole it. So Detective Goodman filled out, filled out a lost iron report. He would have had to give that report to the chief of police. Yeah, you are in possession of the report. Which means you can't be sure if he filed it. He filed it. How do I know, you ask? Because he needed to enter the evidence room that day. He needed to? Yes, to transfer the evidence out. Oh. Detective Goodman took the form to you, Chief Gant. Then... You accompanied the detective to the evidence room. I accompanied him? There's no other way the murderer and Detective Goodman could have entered the room. Hold on, let me guess what you're going to say next. I, the Chief of Police, murdered poor Goodman. I was gonna say no, you, the chief of police murdered him. <laughs> exactly. But wait, the chief didn't necessarily need to accompany him to the evidence room. He could have just lent him his ID card. Yes. Now that you mention it, I believe I might have done something of the sort. Sorry, but that's not possible. According to the record, your car was only used once. Yeah, you showed us your ID card earlier. Yeah, I really lent it to Detective Goodman. It would have been found on his body! Whoa! Oh, damn, he's going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Exploded. Chief Gant, you, you did it! 
The murder was most likely a spur of the moment crime for no one in their right mind would choose the police department as a place to commit murder. After the murder, you contact Ilana at the prosecutor's office. Why? To dispose of Detective Goodman's body, of course. You're forgetting, Mr. Wright, that the victim's body was discovered in the prosecutor's office parking lot. How did he manage to move it there? I was at the police department the entire day, you know. And everyone's aware that Lana stayed at the prosecutor's office after the ceremony. Everyone except me, it seems. Still, you're the chief of police. You have an entire police force at your disposal. Oh, so you think I just ordered an officer to do it? Hey you, take this here dead body over to a prosecutor's office. I don't think so. Chief Kent, you left all the evidence we need. To prove how you moved the body to a prosecutor's office. And all this time I thought it was a useless clue just taking up space. How could a chief have moved the body? Mr. Wright, show us this evidence. This useless evidence in your inventory. To move the evidence body, Chief Kent used this. This attorney's badge, the most useless thing <laughs> in this entire inventory. No, it's been proven at least once or twice now. <laughs> uh, mm. Something what? that... Useless... Uh... Did... Uh... Did... Is it... Oh, uh, is it... Is it Blue Badger? No, that's been useful. <laughs> I'm saying, did he show the body in Blue Badger and then that's how they no, did it? it? No, no, no. The Blue Badger is a flat piece of cardboard thing and it didn't go anywhere. To, use, to move the victim's body, they used... Hmm. I mean, isn't it... Isn't it just the... The car? Uh... Useless piece of evidence. It has to be this, right? We have not even talked about this parking stuff. Uh, uh, we did. That was time for he entered the lot. What is a useless item that we have not used this entire case? It's on the other pages. We use that, all that. The shoe, the knife. The Lumino ID card reading, fingerprint set, screwdriver. <laughs> screwdriver brought back to his office by Gant. It actually it could be the screwdriver. We haven't used the screwdriver at all. Yeah. Or anything. Like this and is the Gant brought it back, right? Or something. Edgeware brought it back. To move the victim's body, he gave Edgeworth this screwdriver to bring it back. And then that's how Edgeworth's car ended up in the prosecutor's garage. Right? Oh, yeah, because he had to go to the police department to yeah. pick it up. And then during that time, got the body thrown in his trunk. Yep, so screwdriver it is. It was awesome. Give it. That's how he moved Detective Gun's body. What's that? A screwdriver? But what does that have to do with this case? Mr. Edgeworth, think back to the day of the crime. What is this screwdriver doing here? It's here because... Uh, uh. I was asked to go, but you can't know less. He told me he wanted to keep it here in the prosecutor's office. In any case, on the day of the stabbing, I brought this back here. You had to drive there. After the ceremony ended that day, I didn't plan to return to the prosecutor's office. But you did, because Chief Gant asked you to. You mean I... I... You drove with a corpse in your body. I <laughs> mean, yeah. a corpse in your car. <laughs> the body was found in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. 
I think it's obvious what happened. The body was moved by that car! Detective Goodman's body was carried in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car? Yes, unless of course you have another explanation, Chief. Why else would you have asked Mr. Edgeworth to transport evidence from a closed case? There's only one plausible explanation. To transport the body to your accomplice, Miss Lana Sky. Order, order, order! What's going on here? Is there no room for rebuttal to the defense's outrageous accusations? Think back to the photograph Miss Starr took at the prosecutor's office. This was not a photo of the body being stuffed in the trunk to be taken away. It was exactly the opposite. It is a photo of the body being taken from the trunk. Chief Kent, please say something. I believe... Your time's up. My time's up? Sorry, Rido, but I'm having lunch with the District Attorney General after this. We have to get going if we... To make it in time for the early bird special. But, but, the cross examination isn't finished yet. Remember what I told you earlier. Police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons? Like the right to refuse to testify. I'm invoking that right now. Well, what? This is not a time to be casually invoked. There is a certain risk to be considered. So you're going to just run away after all this? Run away? Don't make me laugh, Worthy. I stabbed old Goodman, that's what you're saying, right? But if you had any conclusive evidence, you would have presented it by now. Well, I... You think I had Lana dispose of the body? If so, then show your proof and get it over with. Hmm. I'll say it again, Mr. Wright. Damon Gant is the current chief of police. This court will not tolerate any accusations against them without concrete proof. Well, Mr. Wright? Hey, Dylan? Your Honor? Do you have any concrete proof? Not proof? concrete. Proof that Chief Gant murdered Detective Goodman and made Miss Guy dispose of his body. Do I have any concrete proof? Uh. 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 I don't. Think. The autopsy report? We haven't used it yet. Not concrete though, it's just guy. Really? Died. One one knife wound died within an hour and a half of four PM. Four PM. He went into the thing of uh Of four PM. It could have been around anywhere around of hour and a half of four PM. I'm saying this four PM after. thing is matching up quite nicely with with this uh this ID car record. Because his body was stabbed at 4 p.m. apparently, which could line up with the 420 here, you know? That's when he went in. Yes, I'm saying with... he went in with Goodman, stabbed him at 420 or whatever, and that's why the autopsy report is saying died within an hour and a half of 4 p.m. Because hmm. it would match up with uh, the the Goodman autopsy report. Death due to loss of blood as well. One knife wound. Back. Concrete though. Oh yeah, if you do, if he died within an hour four and a half or four p.m., then what? Okay, the one knife wound. It happened around four p.m., right? 
Yes. Right. And Ish. where was Goodman at 4 p.m.? I mean, he was there in the thing at 4:20. He was in this room. He was in the evidence room. And we established that the only other person that could have gone to the evidence room was Gant. That's why I say I, that's the I, evidence that uh, says Gant killed him. But it's the concrete part. You could try, but I have a feeling it's... You're doing the think too far ahead thing. Okay. Then what do you pr propose? Mm, no concrete proof yet. Because everything we have is this... Not quite. Is Edgeworth's knife still called murder weapon? Yes, the murder weapon. Uh, Traces of the victim's blood, no prints. Mm. Uh, does not help. No. Anything really. I'm gonna try the autopsy port. If it doesn't work, then I'll just say we have nothing. Give it a try. Okay, let's go away out of this. Gotta keep up the pressure on. I do have such evidence. Uh. Then please hurry up and present it. Just remember. You better prove you can't murder Detective Goodman beyond a shadow of a doubt. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. Due to blood loss with one knife wound, died within an hour and a half. Of 4 p.m. And where was Hour and a half, it, it kind of includes everyone else on that list, though, technically. Yes, but what happened at 4 p.m.? Where was Goodman at 4 p.m.? In the evidence room. 4.20, he was in there. Yes, and that's where the knife wound comes from. The one knife wound came from the evidence room when he was killed. That's why I'm saying the autopsy report. Because if he was in the evidence room, then then that means Gant can only be in the evidence room at the time. But is that... That's assuming that they're going to let Mom actually link up both things. You could try it. But that's... That's multiple ev evidences. Yeah. Proof that he did it. Uh. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. Well, I guess you do have to present something. So you might as well try. Did he ever have the knife at any point? The only time he would have gotten that knife was 
from that locker, but I think it was already broken. The Goodman locker, right? Uh, ye uh, uh. But wasn't this knife already proven not to be anyone's murder weapon? Not even Goodman's? Yeah, um, okay. That's evidence from the last case. That's Marshall's. That's Marshall's. We still have that one handprint behind, uh, behind the, the blue badger, remember? The initial handprint? Yeah. So that's still a possibility as well. Dancing in the evidence room in the time of the murder of the PD. Oh, it's allegedly. But we already seen that it wasn't. Well, it was there for the. Oh, yeah, that was only there for Marshall versus. Uh, no, it was there Meek. before. It was there before. Mm. It was there before. Remember, it's cover it was covering up the initial bloody handprint. Oh, yeah, yep. Is this the uh, Is gonna... this the time to use the handprint on on his face? I don't uh... Could you enter the check thing? Does the handprint even light up for anything? Oh, it's still only the picture. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm no, I don't think it's this thing. I mean, I'm pretty sure it relates to it, but I, that that might be thinking too far ahead. Already dancing the evidence room at the time of the murder. Hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking it's either the autopsy, or it could be the blue badger. Like it could be the, it could finally be the, the time to make. To uh, talk about the handprint on its face. If it somehow comes up, because I don't think anyone's ever mentioned any of the handprint. Yes, no one has ever done so, yes. Fair proof, Chief Gant murdered Detective Goodman beyond a shadow of a doubt. It was already. Uh. Okay, well, hmm. It could be this trophy. Mm. I'm sticking with the nothing for now. You don't think it's anything? I don't think we have the proof yet. Nothing really jumps out to me. One knife wound. He could have been stabbed by the halberd. That was that was attached to his trophy. No, that's you don't think that's good enough. Mm, no, 
because then where's the halberd now that we don't have now? In his possession, right? Uh, but that's evidence not presented. Mm. Law number two in that book. I don't think we have it now. Okay. Well, I have to present something. Well, right now you do, but I would Wait, say... No. Wait, my... uh, oh yeah, now I do, yeah. Proof? Oh, shall the Dell. Yeah, I guess we got nothing. So I'm just gonna guess the autopsy point and say we got nothing. I guess so. Yeah, take the hit and then say n I would say nothing. Okay, we got nothing. What is this evidence? We got nothing. I'll let you be the judge. <laughs> Tell us we got yeah. it wrong. But I am the judge. Oh, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I think. Yes, I'm gonna be late for lunch. Our points. Guess it wasn't enough. Please, give me a little longer to consider. Say again, the chief police. This court would not tolerate any position without concrete proof. Well, Mr. Wright? Do we have any concrete proof? No. We're missing the murder weapon. There's no use showing evidence. I'm not sure of myself. No, Your Honor, at present, I have no conclusive evidence. Hmm, see, Yogi? In that case, this court is forced to penalize you for your allegations against the Chief. What? Here's a tip, never gamble when you can't afford to lose, righto? Seems that Lady Luck was on my side again today. Okay, Yogi, I'll leave the rest to you. He's out of here. It's gone. I warned you earlier, Mr. Wright. This is an affront to the senior officer in our nation's law enforcement agency. What? Objection. Lady Luck, huh? Maybe we should have a word with her. Mr. Edgeworth, what do you mean? There's one lady who knows the real truth behind this trial. We haven't had, had the honor of hearing her testimony. A lady who knows the truth. Another witness? In the absence of conclusive evidence, the only other method of proof is testimony. But Chief Kent has invoked his right to refuse to testify. There's still someone else, one more witness who can answer all the questions. Raised in this trial, someone right in this very room. Who is this person? Huh. Why are you asking me, Your Honor? Have you forgotten? The defense is the one calling witnesses today. Mr. Wright, does such a witness exist? She may not be willing to tell the truth. But we can't just stop now. Yes, Your Honor. The defense calls for... Lana, Lana help! Help us, Lana! That. The defendant? Ms. Lana Sky? She was in the underground parking lot at 5 15 p.m. on February 21st. Her task to dispose of the victim's body in accordance with a certain someone's orders. Hmm, Mr. Edgeworth? The prosecution has no objections, Your Honor. Very well. The court will now take its final recess for the day. In 15 minutes, we will reconvene to hear the defendant's testimony. This court is now in re- uh, Hold on! Huh? Chief, yeah, I thought you were going to eat! Listen good, Lana. He's talking to Lana. I don't think you need me to tell you this, but if you accept Mr. Wright's claims, there will be terrible consequences. That's a direct threat. That's a direct threat. That's right. Your sister will be found guilty for Neo Marshall's murder. Ah, this isn't good. 
Of course, you never support such outrageous claims anyways, right? Just something to think about. Alright then. I've got a lunch date to meet. Okay. <laughs> if there are any further objections, this court is now in recess. February 25th, 2.04 p.m. Looks like we managed to stay in the game. Yeah, thanks to your help, Edgeworth. That chief, he's something else, eh, pals? Dr. Gumshoe. Ha <laughs> I'm not a detective anymore. I'm a janitor now. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. Oh, don't worry. I've already decided where to work now. At your office. We don't want you. <laughs> My office? Sure. I'll take the place of that top knotted girl you used to work with. Can you mean uh, Maya? Who? Still, looks like we're all out of moves now. Chief Gant's done it again. How's it he always gets the upper hand? It's not fair he has the right to refuse to testify. Hmm, huh, so down, right? Remember what the judge said. But Chief, this is not a right to be casually invoked. These are certain risks to be conserved. Risk? What do you mean by that? It's simple. If the Chief refuses to testify, the opposite also holds true. You mean forfeits his right to say anything too. Oh, look who it is. Emma, are you okay? You're out of prison. Yep, I busted out. Yeah, when I came to, I was in the medical office. I've been listening to the trial from the gallery. So she heard everything that's been going on. Oh, um, Emma, I'm sorry for what I said before. I'm about calling you a bloodthirsty killer. No, don't be. It was the truth. You know, it's funny. I almost feel somehow relieved. Relieved? Yeah. Now I finally know what really happened. To think that all this time, my sister was being blackmailed by that terrible man. And she did it all just to protect me. Ever since her appointment at Chief's Prosecutor, everyone who knew her said she changed. Perhaps it was easier that way for her. What do you mean? What do you think I mean? To follow Chief Gant's orders. She must have shut herself up deep inside. To force herself to do anything and everything the Chief told her to do. That must be why she became so cold. It was all my fault. It's all because I, I murdered Mr. Marshall. Hey, don't go blaming yourself now. If you want to blame anyone, blame society, pal. We live in us a society. Chief Gant may be able to fool everyone else with his forgery. But he can't fool my memory. I remember now. I knocked Mr. Marshall into that armor. I see. Well, we better get back. It's time for the final act. Emma, why don't you wait here? No, I'm going with you. Hmm? I want to be there. When Lana tells the truth. Let's go, right? It's time to end this. To be continued. Getting the final stretch, Shane. Finally. Well, not finally, but man, this is a long case. I mean, they. This, uh, it's the DLC one, the or DLC? the extra, whatever. How our yeah, DLC worked in uh, DS era. Mm -hmm. 